it's clear that at this point in time, this is the least bad of the options that we have at our disposal. Governor Polis makes the decision for all Colorado cities, towns, and counties. Masks are mandatory. Governor needs to remember, this is Colorado. It's not the land of Oz. He's the governor. He's not our wizard. Plus, a strip club sues to bring its dancers and customers closer together. And what will and won't be allowed when Denver students head back to class. Some decisions are surprising. Others are alarming. I'm concerned over my kids. Opting out is no longer an option. Effective at midnight, masks are the law of the land in any public indoor space for anyone 11 or older. Governor Polis issuing that order to prevent Colorado from becoming the next national hotspot. We have a choice in Colorado, either more mask wearing and more attention to social distancing or more damage to our economy and loss of life. I mean, that's an easy decision to make. Like anybody who cares about liberty and freedom, I I'm resistant to institute a statewide mandate. But it's clear that at this point in time, this is the least bad of the options that we have at our disposal. I get that some people are going to say this is a hardship. But let me tell you this. Uh, I meet with small businesses every day that haven't been able to open up and then that if things get worse, will have their businesses shuttered again. That's a hardship. Denver 7's Megan Lopez begins tonight's 360 coverage with the fallout this order is already facing. Megan? Yeah, and with, uh, for weeks really, what we've seen with different cities and with counties is them kind of coming up with their own rules and deciding if they want to opt in or opt out to some sort of a mass mandate. Uh, Governor Polis says that that has created sort of a patchwork of regulations, but then also a lot of confusion. He's hoping that this state mandate will help clear some of that up, but already we're hearing about backlash. There's a split in our state between those who want to mandate masks. We need to do all that we can to protect our communities. And those who don't believe an executive order or law is necessary. We will act in our own self-interest. Representative Kyle Mullica stands on the side of mandatory masks. Mullica is an ER nurse who's been on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic. There's no reason why we shouldn't be proactive right now. This week, he wrote an op-ed calling for a statewide mask mandate so that places like Douglas County can't opt out. Over 120 lives by October 1st would be saved just in Colorado if we got to that 95%. And that's what's so frustrating is, is it's so preventable and so easy, yet it's being politicized. Urging the governor to take bold action, even if it's not politically popular. I haven't heard from the governor yet. Then today, during our interview about his op-ed. I'm getting a call from the governor right now. And 30 minutes later, an announcement. I'm signing an executive order that's effective at midnight tonight uh, that requires that every Coloradan age 10 and up wear a mask or face covering whenever they're in any public indoor space. While Representative Molika is happy with the mandate. So much for local control, huh? Others are questioning the constitutionality of it, like Representative Mark Baisley from Douglas County. This is not the uh, appropriate actions of a governor. This is not the appropriate actions of a uh, government by the people. Representative Baisley says a lot of people are already wearing masks without that mandate, and he thinks the governor is taking his executive order authority too far. Governor needs to remember, this is Colorado. It's not the land of Oz. He's the governor. He's not our wizard. So for his district? I would find it an appropriate action by a county, and I'd love for it to be my own of Douglas County, to, to step up and say, yeah, we're, we're not going to keep going down this, this path of autocracy. So is a lawsuit on the horizon? Maybe. One thing to keep in mind is that counties and cities cannot opt out of this. They can go ahead and go above and beyond what the regulations that the state sets, but they cannot go below them. For more information on where you have to wear the masks, who has to wear the masks, what the exceptions are, we have a lot more information on our website, thedenverchannel.com. Just click on this story. I'm live in front of the Colorado State Capitol. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. Megan, thank you. And people refusing to wear a mask could be hit with civil, even criminal penalties. For instance, a customer entering a business without a mask could be considered trespassing. That is if, if police choose to enforce this. The El Paso County Sheriff's Office already has said it won't be issuing citations over masks because it, quote, doesn't want to further erode the public trust. The governor highlighted Arizona and all the people traveling from there to here as part of the reason for his decision. Arizona being one of the states that does not require everyone cover their faces in public. Right now, more than 20 states do. And some, like Texas and Ohio, require masks for only the hardest-hit counties.
This graphic shows you some parts of the country where visitors are coming to Colorado. Specifically in this figure is visits to Denver County. And so you can see that there is potential risk to Coloradans um, posed by visitors to our state who are coming from Texas, Arizona, Florida, and other states where rates of transmission are higher. And this week, the director of the CDC said the U.S. could get the pandemic under control in two months if everybody would wear a mask. Now, local experts aren't going quite that far, but they agree face coverings are the best line of defense we have right now. That's especially true when it comes to preventing transmission indoors. If we're in a small space, the virus can concentrate in that area, right? Um, so think of a bathroom at a restaurant, right? A great place um, to spread virus, small space, lots of potential people in it. We can put a mask on and we can slow the amount of virus infected people are shedding. It's very different from outside. Like try to, what's the volume of air in a park or at a, you know, there's, there's no ceiling. There's more places for the virus to go. It's going to be a couple of months yet or weeks yet before we start to see the impact of the masks on the numbers. Tonight, though, the numbers are not good. Take a look. Today, the state reported another 571 cases of COVID-19 and 14 more people have died. 389 hospital beds are in use at this hour, and that's the most we've seen in some time now. Now, yesterday, Megan Lopez promised us there was much more to come in Denver Public Schools reopening plan, and boy, was she right. Tonight, we have learned failing grades will be discouraged. School bands won't play certain instruments. You aren't even allowed to sing. The biggest issue is going to get hot. Here is Denver 7's Lance Hernandez. The proposal to give an incomplete instead of an F to high school students is intended to have a neutral impact on their GPA. Now, parents I talked with say all the suggestions in this 65 page report don't get to the heart of what concerns them. They still think it's way too early for students to return to the classroom. Oh, it's brutal. Last August, science teacher Lisa Yama showed us a thermometer reading 86 degrees in her classroom. It may be worse this year. This draft return to school plan addressing the use of swamp coolers and fans. We might not be able to use those, what we usually use to cool those buildings, that the heat um, is going to be a bigger factor. The proposed plan would also eliminate the use of lockers. Students would have to lug all their belongings to each class. No singing would be allowed, nor would the use of wind instruments. I think that the, the people that are trying to make these decisions, they're not thinking about themselves being there. Anthony and Natasha Lopez have children in DPS. I don't think it's safe to send them back yet at all. They say COVID is picking up steam again in Colorado, so kids should be learning online for at least another semester. Adriana Lopez not looking forward to heading back to class with a mask. I can't. Why? It's hard to breathe. I've been like hearing that some kids miss school and they want to go back and don't want to do online learning and some kids are going to stay home but I would rather not go to school. DPS says its plan will be adjusted in real time based on new data and guidance from health officials. Lance Hernandez, Denver 7. Whether they are learning online or in person, kids are going to need school supplies. Paying for them can be difficult during the best of times and these are not the best of times. So with school supplies uh, being added into the picture, it, it just adds a little bit more strain to the wallets. Uh, and so programs like this are extremely helpful uh, for families like us and even more families out there that really, really can use the assistance, especially during times of COVID that have been completely wiped out of work. And you can help by dropping off supplies at any Larry H. Miller dealership or Les Schwab Tire Center. Better yet, log on to the denverchannel.com slash pack a backpack and donate. And anything you can give is appreciated because there are still so many people hurting out there. Another 10,000 people filed for their first claim for unemployment in just the last week. More than 376,000 people needed benefits to get by in June. And Adams County Strip Club says social distancing isn't mixing well with its business model. The Players Club on Federal is suing the state, arguing dancers can't do their due diligence from 25 feet away as required by the health department. The state could not comment on the lawsuit, and we have not heard back from the Players Club or its attorneys. Colorado prosecutors now have a longer leash to go after price gougers. Governor Polis signed a bill into law today that makes it illegal for people to sell food, gas, medical supplies, or other items for an excessive price. 
A civil rights attorney out of Washington, D.C. will likely lead an independent investigation into the death of Elijah McClain. The city's public safety committee agreed today that Jonathan Smith should be in charge. Smith led the DOJ's investigation into the Ferguson Police Department following the shooting of Michael Brown. The full council still needs to sign off, but this seems like it's close to a done deal. Colorado Attorney General Phil Weiser will also conduct his own investigation into McLean's death, and a federal civil rights case is also possible. Well, fast and efficient work today from South Metro's finest. Firefighters rescued a person who passed out while working in a trench, and at any moment it looked like that could collapse in on itself, but crews got the person to safety before that could happen.